Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve 153, which is find minimum in rotated sorted array. So suppose an array of length n is sorted in ascending order. So the numbers are going up, but then it's been rotated between one and n times. So for example, the array of originally nums as just the numbers zero to seven. If you rotated it four times, that would become four to seven and then zero to two. Why is that? Well, if you track the four, for example, all the numbers are gonna follow suit. So so tracking the four here, it's going to move forward. And if it goes to the end, it's gonna wrap around to the beginning. It's gonna go forward four times. So the four starts here, it moves forward once, twice, three times, four times, and all the other numbers will follow suit. So it starts at four, it's gonna go up until seven. There's gonna be this critical point here where you go from increasing just to decreasing in one step. There's only gonna be one spot where that's true because it's increasing in general, but because we've now rotated it, there's this pivot point where right here it goes from increasing order just to decreasing one step here and your minimum will be on the right side of that and then it goes to increasing again. And here, this is the only circumstance where it is just increasing up, okay? So you have the chance of this pivot point, but also it could be the case where it's just original sorted order as well. So we're given the sorted rotated array nums of unique elements. Okay, let's unpack that because that's actually a lot. We are given the sorted rotated version. So this has already been rotated. We're not given like the amount of times that it's been rotated or whatever. We've just been given this rotated array and we need to return the minimum element of the array. And also they are all unique elements. So there is no duplicates. Given that thing, we have to return the minimum element of the array. So that's gonna be either that first value there if it's fully sorted, or it'll be that one just after that pivot point. Now, furthermore, we actually need to run an algorithm that runs in O of log n time. And if you've done a binary search problem or two, then this should be screaming binary search to you as something to try. Okay, so let's just look at one of these examples here. This should be enough. So three, four, five, one, two is our input. The output is one because that is the value, not the index, but the actual value of the minimum element. And the explanation is that the original array one, two, three, four, five was rotated three times. That's kind of a misleading explanation. It's correct and that's not invalid. It's just that we actually don't even really care. Like that, the fact that this is true isn't even important to us for solving the problem. Now, if you haven't heard of binary search before, I would check out my video on that. We actually have a couple of them on here already. So we're gonna start off with just pretending we can do a binary search here. I know that's kind of problematic because we have this version in the middle here where it's not sorted, but let's just give this a try and try to tweak it. So we start L at the first index and R at the last index. Now for a binary search, you would calculate your middle index, which is going to end up being here. You can do that through the formula L plus R over over two. That means integer division. Okay, so that'll get you your middle index, but just drawing it, it's gonna be right here. And of course we can access this value here. So we have three values of interest, four, seven, and two. Now in normal binary search, you'd expect this value to be higher than this value. We'd actually just kind of guarantee guarantee that that's true. But we can't in this case. We want to try and discover this pivot point, okay? If we can find this over here, then this actually gets really simple. The problem is that this value may or may not be bigger than this. And let's actually just forget about the left for now. It turns out to not matter as much. So we have the middle value of seven, and we need to actually compare that to what's on the right. Now, if it is bigger, if this value is bigger, what does that mean? Let's actually just pretend it was over here for a second. So if the middle was here and the right was here. Well, we discover that the middle is greater than the right. And I mean the values, not the indices. So the middle value is bigger than what's on the right. Well, it means that M is in this situation over here, where if the middle is bigger than the right, it means that the pivot point must be somewhere over here. Okay, the pivot point must be in this range. Why is that true? Well, if the middle value is bigger than what's on the right, well, that means there must be some point where we actually went up, 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 and then we hit the bottom. If the middle value is bigger than what's on the right, well, that means that over here somewhere, strictly to the right side of M, that pivot point, which we know is here, that must be to the right of M. Okay, so say if we found that's true, let's actually write this down as a rule. And again, I mean the values of M and R, not the indices themselves. So if M is greater than R, the rule is that the pivot point is somewhere to the right. What does that mean? Well, we need to update our bounds. It means we want to set L to equal M plus one. So we set L to be M plus 
plus one because now what do we see? We're looking in a better range here. We know we don't care about the pivot point over here. It must be now somewhere in this range. So we're just gonna keep asking this question. What if the case that this is not true, as in M is less than or equal to R? Let me just make this a little bit smaller because that seems to be taking up all the space here. So let's get our new middle value. We'll get M and let's write the math out this time. So this is index zero, one, two. So M we know is equal to L plus R over two integer division. That is going to be three plus six and then integer division by two. That is going to give nine over two, which rounds down to four. 4.5 rounded down is four. So we are going to get M as this element right here. Okay, so now we actually need to figure out what we want to do if M is less than R, okay? So we're not in this situation, we're in the else. Could this be the minimum, okay? Could M actually be the minimum? So in the case that M is less than R, this actually could be our minimum value. And it turns out that it is, but we need to keep looking in the correct range. So what do we do? We want to narrow in on this minimum. So if M could be that minimum and we want to get closer to it, we set R equal to M. Why can we get rid of all of this range here? Well, we know that this value is smaller than over here and therefore we're looking for the smallest value. We want to update our range so that we get rid of these bigger values and narrow down in on this minimum. So in the case that M is less than or equal to R, we actually want R to equal M. That gets rid of that right side range and we move down to narrow in on the minimum. Okay, let's do this one more time. We'll get our middle value is three plus four divided by two integer division. That's going to round down to three. So our middle value is going to be right here. We ask the question, is the value at M greater than R? If this value is greater than over here, well, we know that the minimum is going to be strictly to the right over here. And so what do we do? Well, we follow our same rule. We set L to equal M plus one. At this point, we can see that we have R and L are equal to each other. And that is actually when we complete this loop because we're going to end up doing this while L is less than R. When they're equal to each other, we break out and that is when we're on the minimum. So notice that following these sets of rules right here, following those rules, we will narrow in on the minimum. Okay, with that being said, let's write our code. So we set n equal to the length of the numbers. So we can start our binary search with l is equal to zero and r is equal to the last index, which is n minus one. Now we wanna run this, as we said, while l is less than r. So when they're equal to each other, we want to escape. And actually both l and r are located at the minimum. We get our middle value, which is l plus r integer division by two to get the middle index. And then we just keep asking the question, hey, if nums at m is actually greater than nums at r, so if the middle value is bigger than what's on the right, the minimum or the pivot point must strictly be to the right of m. So we set L to equal M plus one. Otherwise, could M be the minimum? Yes, it actually could, but we wanna get closer to it. And so R we set equal to M. We don't wanna lose track of the minimum, so we don't go past it. We set R equal to M. After we escape here, we could do either nums at L or nums at R because we're escaping when L and R are equal to each other. So we'll run that. And as you can see, that is going to work. So for the time and space complexity here, well, the time complexity is going to be what? Well, we do a binary search, and while it's a slightly modified one and clever one, it's still just a binary search. We cut off the search range, basically divide it by two every single time, because we go and check out our midpoint, and then we ditch half the range. So our time is going to be big O of log N. That's how fast a binary search will run. And the space complexity here, well, notice we're not really storing anything. That's a number. These or numbers we really just store a couple numbers and so that is going to be constant space solution that's our final answer i hope this was helpful and have a great day guys bye, -bye.